quite the fearsome opponent. A punch Man, for on a it, punch. what solution will they have? Kido. Uh, Kido. Wait, so what does that mean? That means they want to have a way to actually split them up, right? Split push could be an option for Onik with the Paquito having that lane pressure, that mobility as well. But the team fighting, what do you think, Arashi? Evos, Onik, team fighting, neutral objectives? Team fighting, you have to give it to Evos. There's just so much sustain right there. And even with a Necklace of Durance or a Sea Halberd, you're still gonna struggle to really shut people down, especially because your main DPS, once again, is gonna be... Oh, hang on, wait a minute. Kyrie's still Roger. Oh, it's, Albert. it's Gold Lane Paquito! Yeah, it's a Gold Lane Paquito. I thought it would be a Barats in the... Yeah, okay. And wow, so they did flex it out! It's they a fight genius once again! <laughs> you got it again! Again, right? Dude, it's... It's uncanny, man, but here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Expect the unexpected, apparently, now when we see an Onyx lineup. Because here we go with a Makito in the gold lane and a Roger back in the jungle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Land of Dawn for game number two. Now it's quite the big problem. In the previous game, eventually, Brent has enough damage and he shreds through multiple people at the same time. Now he won't have that liberty, even if the game goes longer. He will have, you know, kite ability, but in the proper fight, I think it's kind of evenly matched, and it's more on the side of Evos to really oh, make a mistake. Oh, what? Whoa, what? Way too aggressive by Clockgun. I think he thought he would be able to sustain a bit more. First blood this time to Onik. Annabelle, though, with the red tree advantage, picks the lethal Wanderer, takes it away from Kyrie. Can't underestimate that Odette passive, man, the bounces. Especially when there's only two of you in the lane, like earlier. It's an insane amount of damage. Already a very quick first blood, but we'll see what Onik can do with it. Uh, again, the side lanes are going to be Fighters and Albert. We haven't seen a, a, an Albert Pakiro in such a long time. It's a bit of a throwback, once again. Yeah. It really is. And the thing is, in game number two here, it's sort of a different story, do you not think? With Brands on a Harris instead of something like a Natan. Does it give Onik a little bit more of an edge this time around? Not much of a small window like we saw in game number one. I think it's better, better chances in the late game, but a bit more difficult to try and maybe shut down in the early game, right? That's uh. the, the whole uh, the whole trade-off. What I'm concerned about is Annabelle. On that Nolan, who is he supposed to target right here? I think the only realistic target is Keyboy, technically. And if you use all of your spells for and all of your damage on the Roamer, that's still not a not the most ideal situation. Three debut picks for Onik once more. Again, <laughs> it's insane. They've been utilizing like the same heroes for the entire four weeks, and then suddenly, boom, we get debut picks all around in from the Porcupines. Well, the teams are now going to start collapsing, so it's already a different flavor of a Florin that we saw from Beloisky. Mm -hmm. Onik want to go for the contest from the get-go on the first turtle of the game. I don't think they're trying to contest, they're trying to go for a fight. If they get a turtle, it's almost a given, and Evos won't really be expecting anything else, but they want to try and get kills here, try and start snowballing. Dreams jumps in with a minute, Fury flickers forward, finds three members, Buffy gets the turtle! And now it's going to be Sans who pops in his one song, but in the back it's going to be Keyboy who gets assassinated. Lethal Ignition taking down, gets him down. Annabelle running away. Sans unable to find that last pickup, but Fluffy will fall as well to trade. Fluffy for Keyboy up until this point. Who is it worth it for? Mm, I gotta say, it's a bit more worth it for Evos. With Onik having so much more quote unquote power in the side lanes, they should be the ones winning it out. Even trades favor the team with better late game. Oh. Annabelle, look at Dreams, tanks up the turret wow. for Annabelle to chase down, and they are able to force a flicker out from Sans. We have to see, Evo is doing a great job of trying to find the, of, of trying to just find ways to restall the game out once more. The fact that now they have two healers means that their damage dealers are gonna be a, a lot more secure in the late game. Won't be as susceptible to being dogpiled the same way that, that Bronze was, you know, experiencing in game one. So maybe now that, along with the fact that he's on a Harith, he's gonna be doing a bit of true damage. Maybe this is the anti-fighter strategy. Could be. There isn't too much of a stark difference just yet, but 
what we do understand is Annabelle hasn't really been able to find the pickoffs or the assassinations in the first four minutes of the game. He was able to get one, but other than that, nothing just yet. What's the plan for Evo's glory with this lineup? I need to scale and try and abuse Annabelle's clear speed. Like Mirko mentioned, it's just really, really fast. And for now, with having strong frontliners and ways to really get safety for their own members, Evos can be a lot more aggressive right here, and Annabelle can be a lot more bold moving in to try and steal resources away from Onik. And not to mention the side lanes right here really isn't winning out uh, as much as I think Onik would like. We saw earlier the head-to-head -head between Ludby and Fluffy, and Fluffy is just a lot more experienced in this aggressive playstyle to try and dominate in the laning phase. I mean, technically, is there not more data on Fluffy as compared to Ludby? I think there is, based on his uh, time in Aura, based on his time in Evos as well. Mm -hmm. There's more data on him, but he's drastically changed his style. Ooh, Ludby, that's his welcome, spits him out on the Dreams. Two-man stun, Minus Fury, Flicker forward. Oh, Onik are able to space out of that one. Kyrie jumps in with a like and pounds and now his wallet saw. They catch the brands too. The Lippy falls as well to Annabelle. Kyrie in the midst of it all, jumps in again. Doesn't have the like and form and falls to Klokun. That's a 2-4-1 trade, ladies and gentlemen, for the White Tiger in the fifth minute of the game. And they should have the luxury of being able to take this turtle without any contest whatsoever from Onik. And that's another advantage given to Evo's glory. Man, this early game just isn't going in favor of Onik. I mean, even Albert on the Paquito. Last time we saw a golden Paquito going up against a Marksman. Oh, oh, wow! That is tough. They usually delete Marksmen. They don't get deleted. And just like that, a turret in the hands of Evos. That is tough. I mean, Albert back in the day on the Paquito, he was a monster. I mean, granted, last time he was a jungle, but... You know, you, you think these kinds of things still stay true, but the fact that he got deleted there... What in the world? I love this build from Annabelle. This guy is really, really, he's actually really, really intelligent. Goes for the Hunter Strike instead of the Hepticees and right onto the Sea Halberd. He's gonna shred these frontliners too. Yeah, the extra max HP damage from the Sea Halberd will definitely help out, especially against something like a Barats. And negating the healing. For the Florin is great, but also the shielding coming in from the Paquito and the Odette. That is definitely a huge value pickup for the side of Evos. With the Flash of the Oasis completed though, I, I felt like Onik was planning on going for more dives and such. But now they've lost two of their outer turrets on the top and bottom lane. So now Evos are the ones just controlling. The fact that they have a Minotaur, I think that really just ruined any kind of dive plan that Onik was kind of cooking up. Yeah, it seems very difficult for them. They're banking on that fact, and now they don't have as much space as they do already. I mean, technically, what can they be waiting for? A, mi a mid power spike, right? I mean, that's the beauty of fighters. Mid power spike, and the fact that in the mid lane, they have an actual carry that does damage instead of an Angela. That's the only real thing they have. So they need to be to make sure that Annabelle or Brands don't start snowballing. Because later on, even though there's gonna be AoE damage, if Evos have enough resources to keep Annabelle or Brands alive to just slowly but surely just chunk everyone down and take them out, then that advantage gets negated. Getting a bit of healing. Getting to the Virago oh. from a fluffy pop the last insanity first. Keyboy still holding onto the bloom. And it's all just a zone. Annabelle picks up the Lord and he is two levels up on Kyrie right now. That's a 1v1. Oh. Annabelle wants to go for the burst, jumps onto Albert, misses the fracture, but now just basic attacking Albert to death. Has the bloom luckily from Keyboy. A cross map heal, that global heal coming in handy to save Albert. Dreams, Whoa. Venus Fury and the flicker off the stars. Now on the knock up is Brands. Jumps over to Zaman Force. Keyboy is down. Klockin picks up the kill and Brands is just wreaking havoc, dodging away and getting a few more shots to zone Onik away from this turret. Looking for it now. No P. No dead. It's welcome. Fracture missed again. Annabelle looking for the turret. Brands is hitting Whoa. on it. Now Albert jumps in, but will lose his life again. It's Klockin who's on a killing spree, and Brands takes the mid lane tier one down. So unfortunate for Onik, but so well played by Evos. Earlier on in that team fight, that was a 1v1 situation between Klockin and Albert. That's an Angela and a Paquito, and 
with a follow-up coming through from Evo's Glory, they were able to turn that entire thing around. What Albert thought would be a little bit of an advantage for them ended in really just them at a disadvantage. This is a four, almost 5k gold lead for Evo's Glory in the ninth minute of the game. You're saying just small miscalculations, small mistakes from Onik. I think a lot of people are going to be start, starting to question, like, is this a mental thing? Are they just lost right now, confused on how to deal with Evos? Albert tried to weave in and out, but he gets stopped by Dreams. So Evos are the ones that have, I guess, the mental luxury to be looking and setting up towards the, the future. You know, they're planning out ahead how they want to play these fights out. Even if we take a look at the player's goal, right? NFL, NFL, oh. NFL with the first down! Albert has been taken down again! It's another solo! Two times. Wow. The Nolan pick. I mean, Annabelle, relatively new name in the MPL, but he's been able to make this Nolan such a fearsome pick. We were wishing for Assassins to show up again. I don't think this is how we were expecting it to go, though. Definitely not, and it's really, truly him also and his redemption arc from the last time he was able to pick up an Assassin here. 4 so far. Definitely what you would call, quote-unquote, snowballing at this point. And he's, what, a level ahead of Kyrie at this point? Yeah. A whole level ahead on this Nolan. And four levels ahead of, of Albert, so yeah, Albert's not... Brands is two levels ahead of Albert, too. Brands, the gold lane. Albert just not having a good time at all. He, he was... Every single time, he's trying to really... likes that aggressive style, you know, that kind of sets him apart from CW, but... It's really not working out. He was kept countering it, and it seems like he's the one that's kind of baited, manipulated by Brands. And now with him winning in the lane, it's a complete different situation compared to the previous game. He's not waiting for that late game. He is just out for blood here along with Annabelle. And this time, Kyrie is a bit more sustainable. Annabelle still gets it, though. He used his retribution. That is information for Onik, but can they even capitalize on that? I don't think so. Annabelle certainly doesn't think so either. Moving all the way to the bottom side right here, not even concerned that Onik can go for the contest. If they go for the Lord here, Evos will just immediately just jump on the, on the members and go for a fight instead. So what's, what, what should they do at this point, right? Because the point of the Paquito is you can go for that far lane push in these neutral objectives. But if he gets caught in a 1v1 with Annabelle, he gets deleted, he gets obliterated. So that far lane prowess that he's supposed to have is currently negated with how far behind he is right now. And you can see him being unable to do that. What do Onik work with here? In a way, a blessing in disguise is the fact that, oh, well, again, Brands is on a Harith and not a Natan. So he'll still have a, a very healthy amount of damage and sustainability in the late game. But, Annabelle. but it's more limited. Annabelle. So we'll see. Oh my god. If Onik can just stall towards the late game, they have a better chance at going for an ultra late game approach again. It's not ideal, but I feel like at this point, it's all they got. Would this work? Sans and Albert 2v1-ing Annabelle, would that work? It better work, right? Because if he still somehow gets a one-for-one one and it'll be beneficial for Evo because they are certainly winning up top. Lutpi is so low, Keyboy can help him sustain back up. Look at Lutpi! Straight them down, now brought back to the team. Has the last insanity, nope. Frog armor down already, dead to this welcome. Onto Fluffy, oh. Fluffy loses his life, the Swan Song popped in. Kyrie in the midst of it all, his dream jumps into the back line as well, knocking him up. Albert now with a knockout strike on the Brands, but he has them on force. And the hard guard too. Kyrie shredding them down as Annabelle deals with Sans. Kyrie can't even go for it. The healing from the hard guard is doing too much. Two for one. And Sans will look going for the big play right there, but he gets his ultimate canceled out. He went for the flicker for, I guess, a more, a more surprising way to really output some more damage. But man, the lack of a Purify just means that he... There are just so many ways that Evos can deal with the Swan Song. And Dream has been saving a lot of his card control for specific moments just like that. That's what I meant. Evos are pre-planning their skill usage, and Oni just seems to be the one scrambling to try and find something. Which is like the opposite of what we we're expecting. Yeah, that's why in those team fights, that was, that was brutal for Sans. He thought that perhaps it was already popped in.
but it wasn't. It got canceled. A six, seven K gold lead right now for the White Tigers. Don't forget that Just No Limit is streaming. You guys can catch that for the remaining minutes that this may end up. Not really sure if Onik can go in for the clear this time around. I mean, they do ha still have Odette technically. But other than that, no high ground. I guess other than maybe Kyrie on the Roger? I think Sun is the only real quote unquote high ground that yeah, they have. Then, here. Not really, right? Yeah. Exactly. He can get the ultimate stop. Oh, engage. So charge at three man in his fury. Lupi dodges away from it just because of that. Just rock him. Keyboy gets melted down. Gets bursted down. Fluffy still chunking them. No Lupi's low. And that is again another base turn up top. Evosha looking for a swan song, oh. already cancelled out by the knockup from Dreams. Now another Annabelle on the back, now chased out by Kyrie, but the base is open. Brands with his mind force goes straight forward, goes for a kill instead. Oh, Kyrie, Kyrie desperately trying to save the game, but the Sky Kings get clean swept by Evo's glory. I started the day with saying, Anything can happen. Are we on the brink of change? 